This week on Panning for Gold, we have no Kurt Wombat, no Garrett Brick Tamlin, no breaking 49er football news. It's just a regular, ordinary episode of PFG where we talk Eureka Club, the Tube, women's soccer, new tennis facility, Lee Meyer Goldwire, and t shirt time. Oh, yeah. We're fifth pump into the beat. We start headlines this week with a note about listening to men's and women's basketball road games on the radio. Charlotte has partnered with Stretch Internet once again this season. So if you're not in your car, you're not by a radio dial, you can log on to charlotte49ers.com, listen live on your laptop, but now you can even listen on your mobile device, your iPhone, your iTouch, your iPad, and soon Droid mobile device. For more information on this, uh, check out charlotte49ers.com. The season is fast approaching. We'll have that all set for the launch of the 2010-2011 season. Very excited about that. Sticking with basketball, let's make a note about our game day live chats that we will be doing for every men's and women's basketball home game and road game. Log on to charlotte49ers.com the day of the game. In the release section, you will see the game day live chat powered by Cover It Live. And you can sit down, chat it up, let your voice be heard with a member of the 49ers staff sitting courtside at the game. We just ask that you watch your language. It's a lot of fun though, so please check it out. Uh, our next headline, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's a great thing, it's a great deal. All of our video content, including this show, gets uploaded to YouTube. If you subscribe to the 49ers YouTube channel, you'll automatically get updated on new, fresh video content. It's a beautiful thing. And to be honest, I really just want you to just subscribe so our views go up and our numbers increase a little bit because it makes me look good, it makes everybody here look good. So subscribe, please, YouTube, Charlotte 49ers. All right, our next headline, photo update time, our new tennis facility, there you see it right there. The uh, slow and steady wins the race, at least that's what the saying is, right? So there you see it, scheduled to be completed for playing surface uh, this spring, but the building and locker rooms will be finished sometime this summer. Looking forward to that. Our final headline this week, the greatest name in Charlotte basketball history, at least in my opinion, Lee Meyer Goldwire is back at it again in the MBDL, or should we say NBA Development League. Lee is a member of the Sioux Falls Skyforce training camp roster, where he's just one of two returning players to the squad. Keep an eye out on Lee, wish him the best of luck as he uh, tries to make the regular season roster and navigate through the NBA minor league system. So good luck, Lee. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on uh, for you the rest of the season. That time once and again, guys, what time is it? T-shirt time! No, it's not T-shirt time, guys. I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have T-shirt time on the show. But it is time for Highlight of the Week, if that's any consolation. For this week's Highlight of the Week, we go to the men's basketball scrimmage. Here's Shamari Spears against Queen hitting the triple. I love the reaction. Look at him. He's saying, I got you, boys. Don't worry, I got you. Shamari with the triple. This is the play of the game, though. Deuce in the lane with the pass around the defender to fill for the one-handed stuff. That's the highlight of the week. That time of the week once again, your weekend weather update with our in-house meteorologist, Garrett Biedebaugh. Garrett, I hear we have a situation brewing in the southeast this weekend. Thanks, AJ. Garrett Beatonball here with your weekend weather update. As you can take a look at the map here on Friday, mostly sunny conditions with high temperatures reaching in the upper 50s. We'll have a few fair weather clouds in the sky, though. Uh, men's soccer and volleyball plays at 7 p.m., so come on out and support the Niners this weekend. Saturday, mostly sunny. Once again, we'll have a highs dipping down to the low 50s, so really cool there for you. It's going to be hard to get your GTL on this weekend. Uh, and as we transition into Sunday, 
Mostly sunny skies once again, a little bit warmer with a high around 60 degrees with mostly sunny conditions and senior day for men's soccer and volleyball playing as well at 1 p.m. That's a check of your weekend weather update. I'm Garrett Biedenball. Thank you, Garrett. Good luck getting your GTL on this weekend. If you don't know what GTL means, well, shame on you. Shame, shame on you. When we come back, Eureka Club feature, and we talk with the women's soccer team as they head to the 810 Women's Soccer Championship as the number one seed. Don't go anywhere. Watch UNC Charlotte Cable Television locally on Time Warner Cable Channel 22 on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays for the 49ers Insider. Hosted by 49ers student athletes, the 49ers Insider goes behind the scenes in the 49ers All Access segment, highlights 49ers student athlete accomplishments off the field in the 49er Focus segment, and showcases the 49ers involvement in the community in the 49er Pride segment. Watch the 49ers Insider, a program devoted entirely to Charlotte 49ers athletics on UNC Charlotte cable television and on the web at video.uncc.edu. The 49ers Insider. Here with uh, Shannon and Kendria. Kendria, talk a little bit about what's going on and uh, wh what we're doing here in the, uh, in the food court. Yeah, we have our Eureka Club here with us today. It's just an event that Coach Addison has had in her mind for a while to get a couple of our fans, be part of the Eureka Club together, and so we can meet and greet, see them at the games, no faces, and put names with faces. But it's a potluck that we're having just to really uh, show our appreciation to what we call the Eureka Club, which is a, a tip-off club, a lot of people call it that, a, a group that's a supporter of women's basketball. Uh, they, you know, they get to meet before the games and hear from the coaches and just a group that we really hope to grow in the future. This is our first time at the, with the potluck and I think it's a success. Uh, it's a good time for them to get to know these people support our program day in and day out and I think it's important that they get to know our players. How is it important for you as a player, Shannon, to meet some of these people? I mean, they, they get to see you play out on the court, but now you get to kind of interact with them. How, what's, what's, what's that going to be like? Well, it's very important because they are a big supporter of our team, so by them coming and us showing them love, they'll probably bring more people. Oh, I think this is where you kind of sneak one up on them, and they actually learn more from this event than anybody else does. I think it's it helps them uh, with, you know, social skills, working on speaking in public and talking to uh, their fans. Uh, I think it, it, it probably helps them when they look up in the stands and see a familiar face. Uh, they'll feel like they've got a friend up there instead of uh, just somebody they don't know. So I think it, it, it establishes a relationship. Let's talk about practice real quick, how things going and, uh, you know, a couple weeks before our first game. Right, things are getting better and better, you know. We have our ups and our downs. We're going to have that with this team. but. Um, we, we're all buying into what's going on with Coach Aston and things are just going to get better and better. I can't wait through these three weeks. I mean, we have good days and I think that's probably what everybody would say. We have good ones and then we have days when I think we've got a lot to work on. So uh, I hope that we can level off the way we're playing, but uh, we still have some time. We'll have a couple of scrimmages here and I hopefully get some things ironed out. But I like uh, the attitudes of the girls and I like where we're headed. Through darkness and smoke, leaders emerge, daring possibilities, taking control and moving us all. It's a battle brought to a field where snare beats start to feel like heartbeats and speeches inspire greatness. It's playing to potential, holding the line and pushing the limits, discovering courage, strength and determination, discovering destiny. It's stepping off the sidelines and being a part of something bigger, united by the love of a place and the love of a game, where there's nothing that can compete with heart and everything, including a legacy, is left on the field. It's finding your role, proving yourself, and reveling in the glory. It's a team led by a few and followed by many. It's college football. And for the Charlotte 49ers, it's a rush.
All right, we're here with uh, head coach John Cullen. And coach, you guys just clinched a share for the regular season A-10 championship. What does that What does that mean to the program here? Well, it's a kind of continuation on of the success we've had previously. And uh, it just shows that we're maintaining our standards and we're maintaining tradition in place. Um, it's a testament to the work the girls have put in this season and the coaching staff. Uh, we've stayed focused, we've stayed together, and we've um, you know, regrouped here strong towards the end to have a good finish. And I'm very proud of where we are right now and how we're playing. Okay, what do you think the keys are uh, to you guys making a run at this thing um, in the tournament? I think the key will be for us to get a goal quick and uh, play composed because when we play frantic, it just gets crazy. So um, if we go in and just uh, take care of business and follow the game plan, I think we should be good. Uh, Sam Hecker and uh, Sam, can you talk about um, what your game plan is going uh, going into the tournament? I mean, we're just trying to stay confident with ourselves. We're obviously coming off a lot of good wins, so uh, we're looking to build off that and really just take it to them when we go up to Rhode Island. You guys are scoring scoring a lot of goals lately and keeping a lot of clean sheets. Um, does that give you confidence heading into the tournament? I, I think it definitely does. I mean, we look to our forwards, obviously, for goals and then through the midfield, but uh, kudos to our defense because they've been they've had a stellar clean sheet record, which is awesome. And Mackie Wingo scored five goals in the uh, – last two games last weekend she seems to be really coming on it seems like the team's coming together at the right time um, do you agree with that absolutely I think to be successful this time of the year um, you need your goalkeeper and your defense to be playing well and you need your strikers to be on fire and um, I think in all both categories our defense and goalkeeper as a unit are doing very very well and our strikers are looking dangerous and uh, if you've got both of those areas functioning well um, give yourself a chance to be successful and um, Mackie and Wine Rob in particular up front are playing very, very well together. But we're getting great contributions from, you know, Oni, John and Hector and across the board and Kirby. So we're pleased. We feel like right now we're getting contributions from the entire team and as a coaching staff that's that's what you want this time. We want everybody to be, you know, contributing. I know you said you don't want to look ahead and you're just going to play who you play, but um, do you have Dayton circled on that, on that uh that bracket or are they uh, just another opponent? Um, I think at this stage it's probably too dangerous to say those kind of things. I think when you start looking ahead or looking beyond um, you kind of, you know, get come undone. So we'll worry about that if we're successful Friday night and we'll turn our attention to the winner of their game. Um, you know, they are a strong program. We truly expect them to, to be in that A-10 final and uh, we expect themselves to contribute and work hard to themselves a chance to be there. But, there are six teams going to be there. I think all six have a legitimate chance. Um, again, as I told our players, we can't worry about the other five programs or the five seats. Let's do what we need to do. Let's do it well. Um, and we'll take care of business if we've done what we need to do. Okay.